Hello, good morning and welcome back to the fish logger out on the boat. Out on a beautiful morning on the boat. Look at that. Definitely my favourite time of day, without question. The first thing I'll say today is I, I will thank my beautiful wife and my wonderful children for this terrible cold that I'm carrying. So yeah, I'm not operating at 100% today, so just, uh, just bear with me. I couldn't pass up the weather window opportunity though, so I'm off to go and do some wrecking. I, I went wrecking with my little lad last time I went out. I had a wonderful day on the boat, but the fishing wasn't fantastic, so the freezer is getting quite low. I'm hoping to catch some ling and some pollock today. That's the plan. I don't know if you can tell, but the water, because of all the bad weather that we've had, the water is a little bit muddy. It's a little bit dirty. So finding bait this morning might be difficult. I'll steam around for half an hour, three quarters of an hour, see if we can't find some fresh mackerel, some scad, some pilchards, anything like that to use as bait. As usual, I'll explain the rigs, the rods, the tactics and everything as I'm doing it. I have actually, I've got a new rod. I've got an early birthday present, so I've got a new rod to test out today. <sighs> Definitely, 100% my favourite time of day, without question. Let's go. I have been steaming round for ages and I haven't found any and then bang, full string of four. Yes, I'm happy with that. <laughs> Let's get him unhooked. Oh, it doesn't get much better than that. Just pop one off on the surface as well. They were all nice sized mackerel. That is fantastic. We've got some amazing bait there. Let's get where we're going. Well, I have got where I am going. I am a fair distance offshore. I've just arrived at the wreck that I want to fish. I'm just going through, I'm going through my tackle box here now. I think what I'm going to do first of all, we have got quite a bit of swell. We have probably the best part of six foot of swell coming from a southwesterly direction. We've had quite a lot of southwesterly weather and we've still got, there look. The way that I gauge how much swell we've got is usually, I, I, I don't consider there to be quite a bit of swell until I can't see the horizon when I'm down underneath. And here at the moment, when you're down in a trough, every third or fourth one, yeah, I lose the sight of the horizon. So yeah, it's taller than me. That is potentially gonna cause us some issues, just because, just because when you're fishing into a wreck, you're better off keeping contact with, with where your bait, the weight and the rig are in the bottom. And if you're going up and down on six foot swell, your, your rig bounces. Now we have northerly wind, southwesterly swell, so we are going to swing around a little bit. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drift the wreck. And all I'm going to use is a one hook wrecking rig. Just run one way. That way around? That way. That way around. Yeah. I'm going to flap her off one of the mackerel that I've just caught. I'm going to start off using a 10 ounce lead. We're in 78 meters of water. I'm gonna just well at the moment I'm drifting at 0 0.7 knots a little bit faster we'll try it out the first drift the first couple of drifts will show me which way the boat's gonna go after that if I'm not picking up any fish or if it's not running right for the drift I'll see about putting the anchor down I'm reluctant to do that right now because just because the conditions are very good <laughs> conditions are very good for anchoring you have to think about the orientation of the wreck. This wreck is kind of sat like that. And the wind is going like that. So you've got to get it bang on. If the wreck was sat like that and the wind was going like that, you can afford to be a little bit off with your calculations. Anyway, stop coming up with excuses. Let's get some fish. Yeah. I'll, um, I'll get all my rig ready, sort it out, and I'll show you before I drop it down. The rig, very simply, 
it's just a one hook wrecking rig a 12 ounce lead I've gone with the 12 and a 20 to 30 setup now this is a new rod this is the first time I've used this rod it is one of the Penn Regiment solid carbons and I've just matched it with my Findor marker set I've just come up I've just come up tired of the wreck dropping down to the bottom and hopefully I'm just gonna trot a bait along alongside it or just in it First, <laughs> first drift, you very rarely get it right. Yeah. Also, you can tell what I'm doing is I'm just, just trotting the bait along the bottom, giving it the odd bounce, because you can tell where the bait is on the bottom by how it feels. This wreck is in amongst a load of sand. Now, the lead bouncing on sand is like a soft thud, but the lead bouncing on a wreck is like a hard bang. Missed the wreck completely. <laughs> Run two drifts and went perfect straight like that. Come round again to do it, and it's just gone. Yeah. Try that one again. <laughs> we didn't get anywhere with the drifting, just couldn't get it right. There was fish there, I knew there was fish there, I could feel the pouting pecking at the bait. So, all I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and see if I can't put the anchor down. Now I've covered this in loads of videos before, what I'll do is I'll tag a video into the, into the description of this one that's all about how to anchor a wreck rather than me go all the way through it now. If you're interested, yeah, there's another video for that. But yeah, we are yeah, 78 metres of water, so two and a half times the depth of water in rope. I'm sat back now, probably 10 to 15 metres in front of the wreck. Now this swell is going to cause a little bit of issue. The reason I haven't put myself right in the wreck is just because of this swell. I'm hoping that if I can stay just outside of it, I can maybe draw the fish out. And I'm going to send down some baited macro feathers to see what else is down there. Because if I bring this back and it's got whiting and pouting there, there's a good chance that it'll be ling down there. As the tide starts to drop away to slack water, I might creep a little bit more rope out and sit myself further back into the wreck. But right now, I don't just want to get myself straight in it and snag up and lose all my gear straight away. The wreck is in that kind of diagonal from kind of midships down to there and about like I say 10 to 15 meters behind me so hopefully the scent of my baits will drift back into the wreck and we'll bring the fish out <laughs> I found a little bit of wreckage down there look those are anemones got ever so many quite rude names witches nipples and things like that yeah so there is a little bit of debris down there we're sitting quite nice now I might I might send another bait down I might send another big bait down but on like a running ledger rig Come away from today with a couple of fish. If we come away from today with a couple of fish for the freezer, I'll be very, very happy. Problem is, is I'm leaving a little bit of slack line so that when we go over the swell, it doesn't bounce, doesn't bounce the rig every time. But unfortunately, that means that little bit of slack line is I might miss the bite. 
Oh, this is a big one. That was a big swell. <laughs> Let's get that other bait down there. When I'm wrecking like this, all I do generally is I bring a little bag of spare leads and a bag of pre-made rigs. In here I've just got a load of rigs already made up. A couple of spare muppets, a couple of spare rooks. Because the tackle wants to be just simple and strong. You are going to lose gear, it's inevitable. You're fishing into a shipwreck. The fish down there, you don't know whether or not it's going to be £5 or £45. And Ling have got really sharp teeth. So you need to use strong line. These, um, get them out. These fish locker conga rigs here that I make up. I make it either like out of 150 or 200 pound mono. And um, a 12 or depending actually depending where I'm fishing. If I'm fishing somewhere and I know the fish are going to be on the smaller side, so they're going to be like sub 20 pound, I might use an 8 or. If I'm fishing and I know there's going to be big fish down there, I'll go 12 o's and 14 o's. Because you match the fish, you match the hook to the size of the bait, and you match the bait to the fish. So if I'm going to be using like a full pouting, I'm going to be using it on a 14 o. Anyway, let's talk him. Let's get another bait down. That's a good sign. Yeah, all I'm doing now is I'm sending down one on a running ledger rig. Just coming to slack water now. Over the next half an hour, three quarters of an hour. If we don't pull the fish out, we're probably going to have to re-anchor. Just because as the tide as the tide changes. It's going to move around our position on the wreck. I am miles offshore in the middle of nowhere and a seal has just popped up next to me. If he's diving all the way down to the seabed here, he's got a rare set of lungs on him. Now when you're fishing, you never get any trouble from dolphins, porpoise, anything like that. Seals are an absolute menace. They're a nuisance. And the problem is, is because people cannot stop themselves from getting involved. We have a, a seal sanctuary that's maybe about 15 miles from here. People find seals sick on the beach, which is just nature's way of, of strengthening, the, strengthening the stock, thinning out the weak ones. You get times a year when they're starving because there isn't enough food to sustain them. That would be nature's way of creating a balance if people can't do that. They'll take them in and nurse them back to health and then the seals start associating people with food and then you compound the problem because there wasn't enough food to support the stock when they were, when they were starving. So now that you've made more of them healthy and you're releasing more of them, compounding the problem so rather than letting one die of starvation through the winter, next winter 10 of them will die. And like I say, they start associating humans with food. Oh yes. Just hope that seal don't get hold of it. That'll do, that'll do nicely. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Nice stocky ling. It's a good size for a fillet that. Oh. Nice size that for getting a couple of fillets off. Yeah, I was panicking then that that seal was going to have it on the way up. He's just emptied his stomach all over the boat. This is what he's eating. Little fish. 
these are pilchards because they've still got some of the scales on them all that was there was my one hook wrecking rig and I put some fresh mackerel fillets on it get this sent back down sharpish that's all it was well I've christened my new rod anyway yeah I'd caught some mackerel on it but that didn't really count christened it with a proper fish I don't know if you saw the bite there but it was very a very aggressive bite ling generally yeah you, you know when you've got a ling bite conga can be can be a lot a lot more subtle they can be everything from like a little mouthing bite to it like a whereas ling usually it's it's an aggressive one they're more of a more of an aggressive predator do a bit of housekeeping Yeah, like I was saying, on the way up, I was worried I brought that fish to the boat very quickly. But I didn't want to play it out and that seal get rolled a bit halfway up and rip it, rip it to pieces. Because they are known for doing that. Yep. Got our fish. I've just changed this bait over. I was busy dealing with that. <laughs> Sorted all the bait out, ready to go down, turn around, the rod tip was going like that. Yeah, I missed it. But at least it shows me there's another fish down there. That's a bite. Wow, that was a bite. And a nice one as well. I'm in a dilemma now because I've had a really good bite on that rod. Now there might still be a little bit of bait down there and the, the fish might be right next to it. So if I bring it in now I'm going to miss that fish. If I bring it all the way to the surface and, I realize, and there's still bait on it, I've missed that fish now. But if I leave it down there and there's no bait on it, I'm not going to catch now. So I'm fishing without any bait. From the bottom, yeah, that's from the bottom. Coming up and down over them swells, he's snagging me up. Let's put a glove on and see if I can't bounce this out. Okay. No, it's the lead. There we go. Yeah, I'm going to change the bit. That's a big fish, that. That is a very big fish. Oh, no. That is a monster fish, that. It's just let go. I think what we have down there is we have a pop eagle shark. Because that is 200 pound line just bitten clean through. So yeah, if we haven't got a seal to contend with, we've also got a porgy. Well that explains that then. <laughs> I said there was a bit of weight to it. <laughs> ah. Try again. Usually what happens there is when you're bringing a fish up to the surface they'll they'll ex <laughs> they'll they'll take their attacks. They'll make their presence known. 
Yeah, the key to this is getting the fish on the feed. I know there's fish down there now. Yeah, I know there's fish down there. It's getting them on the feed. I can feel it. It's a piece of net. Can feel it moving. Yeah, when it's when you snag up on the seabed, when you snag up on the seabed, and it comes tight immediately, as in there's no bounce, no give. You know you're eating. You know you're eating the wreck. You're stuck in a piece of metal. This here. Yeah, look, I've got a little bit of give on it. It's either a line snag, as in like some someone else's fishing line that's lost, or it's a piece of net. Snapped off. We've swung round onto a different part of the wreck now. We've swung round onto a different, a different part. And there might be a piece of lost net on it. Now from speaking to other anglers around the world, this isn't just a problem for us here in the UK. There's a lot of different names for them. And it's people who cannot put the work in for themselves. And they have to follow folks around. Like that. Close there mate, you've washed me straight off the wreck. Found that piece of net or whatever it is. That's a fish, and it's wrapped around a piece of rope. For those who don't understand what that anchor there just did, was it's just perfectly fine sharing a wreck. But I'm anchored up and he steamed real close to me and his wash washed me straight off the wreck. At the moment I've found a fish, I've got it off the seabed, but there is a piece of net or rope or something wrapped around the wreck that this fish is now stuck into. That other bit of snag is actually part of my line. Knock it off. Knock it off. There we go. There we go. Lost fishing line. Sort this out and then speak to them lot. Some people it's really not worth talking to. 
what I met there, and I will bleep the word out because I know that I've got younger audience. A sh kicker, Cornishman. Why don't you just bugger off where you come from? I've been fishing these wrecks for 40 years. I'm an extra -lisker. What you got there is someone who is that much of an idiot. It's not even worth talking to. Three things wrong. Steamed that close to me while I was at anchor. It's dangerous to start with, but secondly, washed me straight off the wreck. Now there's an etiquette when you come to fishing. Share the wreck by all means, but obviously be careful where someone's anchored up. The next thing, steamed straight over the wreck, so scared all the fish away. And the next one is fishing with lures on like the smallest of neat tides. Young lad who was behind the wheel, young lad who was a skipper, at least had the common sense to have a conversation. But that complete moron he had on the after deck, I hope I bumped into him again. Go and find somewhere else. Try drifting it. The perfect scenario for doing this is with either no wind or wind and tide together and very, very small tide, so a really small drift. Just so that you're drift, drifting over the wreck really slowly. Now, this is why you do this on neap tides. You can't do this on spring tides other than bang on slack water. Neap tides, it's only a small distance between high tide and low tide. Only a small range. So that means that the tidal flow is never very fast. Which is why you do anchoring and drifting on wrecks with bait for link on small tides. Fishing with lures on booms and things like that, you need larger tides. Which is why I'd kind of said that to them lads there. All four of them are fishing with booms and with, with sidewinders. So completely the wrong tides to do it. Always makes me kind of laugh when you get someone like that. I've been doing this for 40 years. Have you had your eyes closed for 40 years because you're doing it all wrong? Yeah, the conditions have worsened slightly. All we've got now is the wind's completely turned around and it's wind against tide, so I'm swinging about. That swell's still here and it's starting to build a little bit of chop. So yeah, I think we've had all the fish that we're gonna have for today. Can't complain of that though, we've had two cracking link. Really happy with that. And the, uh, the rod. The new rod christened it in style this is a regiment 3 solid carbon and it's a 20 to 30 now it does it does look a little bit whippy but i tell you what it's it's handled it fantastically i mean it's got a 10 ounce on at the minute but i've had it everything up to 16 ounce and a bait yeah it's good in fact actually the rig while i'm here the rig that caught the two fish today was just a one hook wrecking rig yeah just dead simple with a bit of fresh mackerel and all I do there is I just have a strong swivel on me leader. This has been coupled with a Marquesa, Finno Marquesa. In the summertime, I'm going to have this as my deep shark rod. When I go up sharking out, in fact, I won't bother telling you about that. I'll just tell you when I do it. Yeah. Tidy down, get back to eat. I'm going to gut them ling out here, but I'm going to fillet them in there because we're slopping about that much. I would only, I didn't cut, cut my hand off. Yeah. Just one of them days today. Right, let's get going. They're incredible like that seagulls. You can be miles out of sea and there'll be none anywhere. And as soon as you throw the first thing over the side, they'll be on.
There we go. No bones, no mess. Perfect.